This is Sean with Gate City. We're out here today on a septic repair job. And so I know the homeowner's over there with the chainsaw, but I want to get this intro going. So he's got a septic tank here that's a two foot riser on there. And his septic field has failed on him. And so he dug it up here. He's got some clay tile in there. Let's see if I can get you in there. And so we're going to replace the septic field with some chambers today. Now our main problem is this tree is in the way. So I'm going to be taking that down. That's got a few widow makers on it. So I'm a little bit worried about it, but we're going to find out how we do there. So I've got Ronald and Fernando with us today and we got 120 feet, I think of chambers. So the first thing I want to do is, is find the outlet pipe here so they can start working on that. We're going to take the outlet pipe straight into some new chambers. All right, so we got this tank exposed. The lid broke a little bit, so I'm going to have to figure, figure out something to go there. But we had terracotta all through here, and it looked like it was pretty well clogged. There is a baffle on here, and it looked like it was working. But we're going to get this all new with PVC here today. So while the guys are working on that, I'm gonna go whack that tree a little bit and see if any of those branches fall. So like I was saying, a dead tree like that, that's what, we, what you call widow makers. So all those branches up there, when I'm down here pulling on the roots and pushing on the tree, those things are gonna fall on me. So I'm gonna try to go easy on this thing. When you have a dead tree like this that has been dead for several years, the branches basically will start to fall off as they rot away and we call those branches widow makers and so when I'm over here pushing on this tree those dead and weakened branches can then break off and drop on top of me and so before I started doing too much with this I reached out my excavator to the full extent and and banged on the tree a couple times and had everybody watch and make sure nothing was going to break and so it's always a good idea to take down trees as soon as they die instead of letting them stand and, and rot away like this. And you're going to see how another piece of that is going to come into play here in a second when this tree does not go where I want it to go. I was so startled by the tree not going the right way that the drone fell out of my lap and it spun around and didn't catch the tree actually falling. But upon closer inspection, the bottom was all rotted out and hollow, which is why the thing went in the wrong direction. Okay, so that did not quite go as planned. We took out the customer's internet line, but not the power. So what I should have done is I brought my root hook here. I should have broken the roots up a little bit more but I thought it was going to be an easy push, so that's kind of my fault. But the homeowner said, cut it there, push it out of the way. He'll deal with it later. So it's down. We didn't take out the power, luckily. So we should be in good shape. Nobody got hurt.
All right, so Ronald and Fernando got this dug out a little bit more, and you can see that this has been broken for a long time. You see how that's, that edge is all black? Now, we did break that edge right there, and you can see that's a nice clean break right there. But the rest of this was already broken, so we're definitely gonna make sure to pack this in here really well. So I'm gonna try to bail out some of this water with the bucket, maybe just kind of push it over here somewhere. I already did. As I was bailing the water out of the hole here, Ronald was bailing some of the water out of the tank too to drop the level of the tank down. And so just getting this water out of here made working conditions a lot better. And then once it was all out, I put some clean, semi-clean dry dirt on top of it for a workspace. You wanna try to tip some of that tank down, drop that key down some? I think so, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, let me try it. It's weird that I wonder if that's why they had if that's why they had that that lid screwed up like that. I don't know. We just set this new sanitary tee on there and the outlet is too too high up. It's too close to the lid. So the top of our sanitary tee was poking up. So I think that's why they had the lid jacked up like that. Didn't even need that. He Did talked about replacing the tank, but it, it is working, so. <coughs> we're still not clear. No. Yeah, we're clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. We're trying to get our two laterals laid out here and it drops off pretty good. And so this trench has to be flat. And the reason is the water in the trench will be flat. So whatever the length is, or whatever the height is down there, we're gonna have to come into this deeper and deeper and deeper. That's why the tank is so deep as well. So we've got a little bit of work to do, but it shouldn't be too bad. We are gonna be completely replacing the leach field here and so we're going to be using a chamber system these things are three feet wide by four feet long and North Carolina gives you credit two feet of credit for every one foot of chamber and so we're starting here at the downhill side and the reason we're starting there is because however deep that chamber is going to be at the downhill side is going to set our trench depth and so we're starting out here at the downhill side with an end cap and we're going to set our end cap in there and make sure it's deep enough and then that's going to be our depth for going all the way back to the tank. And so we're just getting a good head start right here and I like to use an 8 foot level just to really make sure everything's good and level. Once we get that going then we can get our transit set up and make sure the whole trench is level. We got a pretty good start to our trench here and we're starting at this end because this end is going to set our height and then we're, we've got to be level and the reason the trench has to be level is because the water is going to be level in here 
and so it'll fill up the the chambers evenly if you have it going downhill the water will all go down to the bottom and then just pile back up and it might also percolate that'll, that'll generate some head pressure so it might percolate back up out of the ground over here which we don't want all right the way these chambers go together is they have an inlet side you can see right there and then Ronald's going to demonstrate how they click together so that goes underneath and then it puts into that little lip right there and then the cool thing is check it out you can pivot on that point right there so these things will move back and forth so they can make they can snake all around and do all kinds of stuff these, these chambers are really awesome all right Nice. You need a short piece of pipe. Yeah. I need a short piece of pipe and um that right there's gonna be about top level. So yeah, we go about maybe three inches. Yeah, whatever. Alright. Just an inspection up. port. Mm -hmm. Alright. One inspection port. All right, the guys are finishing up that first run. They're over there in the, in the trench. And I just set my grade here with my laser, my transit. So now I know what, that, what the height is there. And then I can actually start from the correct side, which is what I should have done on the first one, but we didn't have the transit, so I forgot the transit today. So we've got it now. All right, we're getting our baffle in place and the homeowner just took a shower. Don't ask me why, but there's a bunch of water now leaking through here. We had it down where it wasn't, where it wasn't overflowing and then he went and took a shower on us. So you can see all the scum in there. That's what they call the stuff that flows from the paper. Fats, things like that. And that looks like, I don't know, that looks like some debris right there maybe paper towels or something. But this is exactly what a baffle does, is it doesn't let that stuff that's floating to the surface get into the leach field. And so the only way for the water to get in this pipe is to come up that riser and then come in here. So you have your solids that settle to the bottom, your scum that floats to the surface, and then you have clear water in between, and the clear water is what's gonna make, it, make its way through the baffle and into the leach field. This fitting right here is called a twin elbow, and check out check out what ha what happens here. So it's going to split that water between both sides of it, and so it's critical that this gets installed completely, perfectly level, so that that water gets split in half.
Okay, Ronald just got our pipes hooked up and when I was digging this I made sure to leave this undisturbed so this is going to be really really well supported here you wouldn't want to have this just like floating in the middle of the air and have a bunch of loose dirt around it so we're perfectly level here just barely breaking and this double L is perfectly level I showed you already it'll split that effluent to either side so we should be in really good shape so now the system is pretty much done. We just have a few more chambers to put on over there and then we'll just be backfilling. Okay, we are all finished with our chambers. We've got the chambers all bedded really well. And I'm gonna start lightly backfilling. We spend a bunch of time bedding these chambers really well so that they're very stable. And then I'm just going to lightly backfill over this. The manufacturer of these chambers does allow for tracked equipment to be driven over top of the chambers once you backfill, but it does not, they do not allow for wheeled equipment to be driven over it. And so I've got this excavator here, but I'm gonna bring a smaller machine. are finished with this leach field installation and so I'll be back over here after it settles for a little bit with the mini bobcat to kind of smooth things out and deal with the septic tank lid but this was a pretty full day and we got everything done today we are back out here to finish up with this septic tank that the lid got broken and I brought a piece of concrete Oh, that actually shows how that baffle works too. Check it out. I don't want to dump too much dirt in there. But look at how clear the water inside the baffle is inside the pipe compared to the scum around it. Take a look. So that's what that baffle does is it keeps that scum out of the, the leach field because that will ruin the leach field instantly. And that's what his problem was before is 
the baffle got messed up and his leech field was taking all that scum. They had this thing sitting on there and so it doesn't quite fit anymore. And so I brought a bigger slab. I cut a piece from some old slab that I had there. I think we're just going to set it in place and then put some concrete around it and call it a day. So I think that's what our plan is. Pound it in? Yeah. <laughs> I talked with the homeowner about replacing the septic tank, but it was still working okay, even though it wasn't in the greatest shape. And so we're just trying to get everything patched back up here by pouring some concrete around this lid, and hopefully everything will be fine for a long time with this septic tank. All right, we are finished with this job. So we got everything pretty much rough graded and we're gonna give this thing like maybe three to six months for it to settle. And then I'll come back over here with a Harley rake and really smooth it out. So we seeded and strawed everything. The straw is gonna protect the, the bare dirt from getting washed away. And so we should be in really good shape. Everything is stable now. So everything's been working well for the homeowner. It's a big job for sure. This was an interesting repair job. The customer had had already dug up and located the clay that was leaking and overflowing and the house was all backed up. So he knew pretty much that the leach field was old and it was shot because of all that black water coming out of there. And so he called me, he saw me on YouTube and called me and we were able to get right out there and get that, that job going. And those chambers, they worked really, really well. And I talked about how North Carolina gives you two feet of credit for every one foot of chamber. And a couple things about laying out the leach field, you may have noticed that I went down the hill instead of across the hill. So a couple considerations with that. Here in our area, we have really, really thick soil. And so the bee horizon is really thick also. And so I decided to go down the hill, even though I had to go deeper. Now, if I had gone, started going deeper and I had hit a different soil type, or a different horizon, that would not have worked. And so you have to be real careful because if you go too deep, you'll go into different soil horizons and, and maybe some highly compacted soil, which will not work for leach field. And so the other reason I went, went uh, down the hill instead of across the hill is I wanted to get away from the old leach field. And so that old leach field was pretty much clogged up and ruined. And I wanted to get away from that. And you saw that in several clips in the video where you can see all the black around it. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was 
the reason that the field failed in the first place, I think what happened is I think that when they replaced that baffle at whatever point in time, they they had the baffle too high and when they cracked into the into the tank to get in there, they inadvertently allowed the surface water, the scum, to leach out of the tank. And I think what happened is that water leached out and then found its way into the clay and then from the clay into the leach field. And so that's what I think happened. And so whenever we're, whenever we're doing something like this, a repair job like this, it's always tempting just to dig a smaller hole and replace whatever you think is broken. But I like to go in there and expose everything and just get everything new. And so that's what we did when we noticed that, that that baffle was too high up and it was bringing the surface level too high, we cut it down a little bit and to get it lower. The other thing is that is now in a completely sealed PVC system. So even if it even if the, some of the surface scum does leak out of the tank, it's not going to find a pipe. There's no way to get into the leach field at that point. So eventually that will stop leaking. And we did concrete around the tank where where the lid was placed and Basically, that should keep the dirt out and keep everything pretty much stabilized. So we did talk about replacing the tank, but the tank is working. Everything's good there. He's, he's got that nice riser on there that he installed, so he can access the tank easily to get it cleaned out, things like that. And so this has been working for a while now, and we, uh, we let the, the, the leach field settle. It had rained a few times, and we let that settle. We went back for our, our rough grading and we put the lid back on the tank. Now we did not grade where, we, where I put that fluffy dirt over the tank because like I've mentioned many times, you really want this stuff to settle naturally and, and slowly and evenly and not disrupt the pipe work. And so I told the homeowner, give it a few months, call me back if you need to, I'll come back out there with my, with my Harley rake and really do a nice job feathering it out and reseed and straw it. But letting these things settle nicely and, and evenly and slowly is going to give you way better results. I could have driven over that thing with the with the the bobcat and flattened it out perfectly, but you really run the risk of messing up the pipes underneath and that that doesn't accomplish anything. So I hope you all have enjoyed this septic repair video and hopefully you learned something. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this septic repair video and if you have, you know what to do here. You can also give me a super thanks, become a member, buy me a coffee, or become a Patreon in the links below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.